In our last episode, we completed some quests for Crandon, whom we found in North Vegas Square. After gaining his trust, he asked us to check in with a one Mrs. Hostetler to help her with a problem she's having with her daughter, Alice. Talk to Mrs. Hostetler. She's near the Crimson Caravan. I think her daughter's making bad friends, the kind that'll slit your throat in the dark. Mrs. Hostetler? Well, we recognize that name. We met a man named Don Hostetler when we did our video on the Crimson Caravan. He appears to be the number two man at the Crimson Caravan Company here in Vegas. We find him in Alice McClafferty's office. And when I made that video, which you can watch here, we found Don Hostetler's terminal that we had to hack to gain access to. Inside, we found three terminal entries. The first memorandum, May 17th, 2280, to Don Hostetler from Angie Becker's subject, Tuesday meeting with accounts receivable. Mr. Hostetler, just a reminder, your meeting with accounts receivable was moved to Tuesday. I've cleared your schedule and moved your lunch plans ahead to 1.45. Angie. In the next one, June 2nd, 2280, to Don from Angie, subject emergency meeting, Mr. Hostetler, I really need to schedule an urgent meeting with you. Can you clear an hour this afternoon? I promise it'll be worth your while. Angie. And in the final one, the very next day, to Don from Angie regarding your sexy. I had an amazing time last night, Don. Aren't you glad you decided to stay late? Smiley face. Can't wait to do it again. Kiss, hug, kiss, hug, Angie. P.S. I found some pre-war lingerie at the market today. I think you'll like it. So Don Hostetler is having an affair with his secretary. But when we try to talk with him about this, he has nothing to say on the topic. At the time, we had no idea who his wife was. We just knew that he was having an affair with his secretary, Angie. But Crandon here just told us where we can find his wife. She lives in a little house due south of the Crimson Caravan. Inside, we find Mrs. Hostetler walking around. What are you doing here? Get out before I blow your head off. I just want to ask you some questions. Are you deaf? I don't give a damn about what you want. Just get out of here. As always, we can attack. All right, jerk. You asked for it. You think I'm going to be easy, huh? Come get some, asshole. But if we do, we fail the quest. So instead, we can say, Whoa, settle down there, lady. Crandon sent me. He did, huh? All right. What do you want? Crandon said you had a problem. I take care of problems. He should really mind his own business. Crandon's good to keep scum in check, but he ain't exactly subtle. Okay. So? Do you have work for me or not? If you're good at snooping around, then I could use you. I need to find out what my daughter's up to. She's been frequenting the square in North Vegas, probably hanging out with street scum. I want to know more about her new friends. You know, babysitting really isn't my thing. This ain't babysitting, stranger. I'm telling you, these people are nasty and Alice is in danger. Okay, I'll look into it. All right, we've got a deal then. I'll make sure to compensate you for your time, if you find anything useful. Can I ask you about something else? Okay, what's on your mind? Tell me about this area of New Vegas. Folks call this East Vegas, but I don't care much for names. The East Side gets a lot of merchant and gambler traffic. We're safer here than in North Vegas or West Side, though we've got to put up with the NCR. What's your take on the Legion and the NCR? Don't get me started, stranger. We don't take kindly to either of them. We fought hard for our home, and we're here to stay. The Legion knows nothing of working the land. Those folks would rather pillage, burn, and steal like mad beasts. That ain't honest living. The NCR's no better. They won't burn your home and rape your daughter, sure, but they'll steal your wealth all the same when you ain't looking. So her daughter Alice is hanging out with bad company in North Vegas. I guess that's what caused Crandon to become concerned. We find a Sunset Sarsaparilla Star bottle cap on this side table, and it's not set to own, so we can take it without repercussions. The Hostetlers have a pretty nice home, as far as the wasteland is concerned. 
She has a rather tidy kitchen, lots of junk on the shelves, a few containers to loot, and a back door out to the wasteland. Heading back into the living room, we can open a door to the bathroom. It's a pretty small bathroom, lots of nice natural sunlight. And then heading into her bedroom, we see a couple of suitcases that are empty and a nice double bed where she and Dawn must sleep. Though it's interesting, we don't find a bed for her daughter Alice here. If Alice lives here, where does she sleep? Perhaps Mrs. Hostetler and her daughter live here alone, and Don has his own living arrangements closer to the Crimson Caravan. I'm surprised that Mrs. Hostetler is so hostile towards the NCR. After all, her husband Don works for the Crimson Caravan, and we know that the Crimson Caravan has contracts with the NCR. The two even share the same faction. Increasing reputation with one increases it with the other. Perhaps Mrs. Hostetler is a New Vegas native. And Don came here from California with the Crimson Caravan and married her when he arrived. That's the only way I can explain her being so hostile towards her husband's business partners. At any rate, we need to head back to North Vegas to see if anyone knows where Alice and her friends are. We can start by checking in with our old pal Jules over here. What's eating you? I'm looking for Alice Hostetler. Alice? Oh yeah, I've seen her around here much too often as of late. I reckon she's been hanging out with Andy and his crew. Do you know where I might find them? Try the gray. Beats me why people go into that forsaken thing. At least with huts and sewers, you know they ain't crumbling on top of your head. Thanks, goodbye. I'll see you again, stranger. So Jules last saw Alice, her boyfriend Andy, and their friends inside the gray. The gray is that big ruined building here in North Vegas Square we saw in yesterday's video. So readying our weapon, we can open the big double doors to the gray. Inside, we find a rather typical ruined apartment complex. There's a staircase before us, a path to the right, and a path to the left. But interestingly, we find a thug here, gun drawn, as if he's guarding a door. What the fuck you want, huh? I'm looking for Alice Hostetler and her boyfriend, Andy. Oh yeah? What for? I just want to talk to Alice or Andy. Maybe they don't want to talk to you. Maybe they ain't here anymore. Maybe you asked too many questions, stranger. This is our turf. Don't even try to snoop around or I'll fucking kill you right here, right now. I don't think I like your tone. So what? I don't give a shit about what you like. Go cry to your mama. At this point, we can attack. I like where this is going. I'm ready for you. Hey guys, need a hand here. And if we kill him, we have to fight the other thugs in this apartment complex. Had enough! But assuming we want to avoid violence for now so that we can get all the answers we can, instead we can pass a difficult 70s speech check to lie and say, I just thought Andy should know about Mrs. Hostetler, waiting outside for him, shotgun in hand. What? You gotta be kidding me. Fuck, why do I always gotta fix someone else's crap around here? With that, the thug puts away his weapon and runs outside. If we follow him... The thug just wanders around North Vegas Square. Andy's not going to be happy. Where the hell's that crazy bitch? But with him gone, no one is guarding that door, and we can head back inside the gray to see what was inside. Back inside, we see that a number of North Vegas residents live here. And turning left in the hallway, we see that this is the door to Andy's room, but it's locked with an average lock. And if we pick it, we lose karma. We find Andy's room relatively clean and clutter-free for the wasteland. He has a lot of food and produce in his fridge, but there isn't much else here that's interesting except as we leave, we see a note lying inside his TV stand. This is the henchman message to Andy Scab. Looks like you were right. The Hostetler man always carries a full pouch back to their house every night. Oh, so I guess he does stay with his wife. The same pouch is empty whenever he goes to work for the Crimson Caravan. Fred's seen it himself. No chance in hell this is a coincidence. He's bringing something with him whenever he leaves work. That's gotta be his daily cut from the business. Alice is gonna have to find all that dough for us. If we get caught near their place, her jerk mother's gonna snap for the big guns. That'll mean Crandon, or worse, Jules come after us. I ain't too happy about risking my neck for nothing, Andy. Let's make sure Alice is a good doggy first. Then do whatever you want with her once we're out of this doggone hole. M. 
So Andy and his thugs are just using Alice to get at her parents' Crimson Caravan money. And who is the enigmatic M? Well, now that we have this evidence, we could likely show it to Alice and the gig is up. If we can find her. Could she be in one of these rooms? Exploring this bottom floor of the Bray, we don't find much. In the first door to the left, we find one small box of bobby pins by the TV and a toaster dangling precariously above a tub. I sure hope no one used that to commit suicide. And looking on the ground, oh my gosh, look at all of these empty syringes. Andy keeps his bedroom considerably cleaner than the others here in the gray. Heading out and into the next apartment to the left, we find mud or waste markings on the ground and another refrigerator filled with food. And here we see an interesting scene, a Dinky the Dinosaur toy smoking a cigarette. He even has an ashtray and an entire pack. Heading out and rounding the corner, we see another one of Andy's thugs, and on the ground next to him is another bobby pin. We don't find much else in these bottom floor rooms. In one, we find a TV and a refrigerator next to an animal spine and a skull, and in another, we find sandbags on the ground next to trails of blood leading to a bathtub, but no skeleton or body. Another has tin cans littering the floor. As we're about to go upstairs to the top floor, we're approached by a ghoul. What are you looking at, huh? Answer me, or I'll get trigger happy real quick. And this is Andy? Alice was dating a ghoul? But from what we can tell, he doesn't even care about her. He's just playing the long con. We have a number of options. As always, we can attack and say, I'm here to kill you. Nobody threatens me and walks away alive. Junkies, oh look. We make quick work of him. On his inventory, we find a small amount of ammunition, some jet, and a key to Andy's room, which we don't need because we already picked it. But assuming we want to talk with him first, we could say, Relax, I was just leaving. Wait right there. You told my men that Alice's mother was waiting for me outside, didn't you? We can pass a 65 speech check to lie and say, I have no idea what you're talking about. I've got my eye on you. Get the fuck off my turf. Actually, I know about your plans for Alice. You think I give a shit? Has it crossed your mind that Alice is all the way in this with me? Uh, no. Why would she be? Maybe because I'm so good looking. Maybe because her mother's trying to break her back, planting crops that die from rads as soon as they're in the ground. Or maybe she's just a dupe. Why do you even care? She's happy making her own way in the world. But you're manipulating her into betraying her family. Family's just what the world throws on our shoulders without our say or opinion. You think Alice cares about her family? Tell her then. Family's what drove her to me in the first place. Well, she at least deserves to know the truth. And you think that's worth her happiness? Go on and tell her then. Watch what happens when you crush her dreams. Well, maybe I'll do that then. Goodbye. It's not polite to leave in the middle of a conversation, but I won't try to teach you manners. This time. Aren't you afraid I'm going to blow your plans? And how exactly would you do that? We'll see. Goodbye. Yeah, sure. Or we can resolve this entire thing another way by saying, you know... A cut from the Hostetler's money, and I might help you. I'm glad we understand each other. Alice is at her home, getting our means out of this shithole. Make sure things go smoothly. No matter how we choose to resolve this conversation from Andy, we learn that Alice is at the McClafferty home, the home where we found her mother. And if she's there, that means she's getting ready to rob her own parents. After all, we learned from the note that the Hostetlers have been saving up a little bit of money every single day that Don gets from the Crimson Caravan. By this time, they might have quite a stash. And Alice is going to take the lot so that she and Andy can run off to start a new life. Maybe Andy does care about her in his own way. After all, perhaps this very plan makes her happy. 
Before we head on over to the Hostetler home, we can head upstairs to finish exploring. And here, like downstairs, we find a whole bunch of rooms. In one, we see a bunch of empty whiskey bottles all over the floor. Another Dinky the Dinosaur toy. On a mattress, but this one isn't doing anything interesting. However, in the next one over, we find a Dinky the Dinosaur toy having a knife fight with a floating knife. Now, there's supposed to be a teddy bear here. I'm not sure why it was missing from my game, but when I looked this up, I saw screenshots of a teddy bear holding a kitchen knife and this dinosaur holding a combat knife. There's a reloading bench in this room, but since all of these containers are set to owned, it would be very difficult to turn one of these rooms into a player home. And in the southeasternmost door on this top floor, we find a Sunset Sarsaparilla Star bottle cap Howdy. on a table near to a bed. However, it's marked as owned, so we do have to steal Evening. to take it. That, however, is all that's interesting about the gray. And so our next task is to head back to the Hostetler home to confront Alice, who we know is about to steal money from her own parents. We can only hope that we arrive in time. Back off. I know how to use this gun, and I'm not afraid to shoot if you try anything. I've put up with their shit long enough. No more. I'll... I'll kill them if they get in my way. Whoa, whoa, Alice. I'm not here to hurt you. Then what the hell do you want? Don't try anything. I mean it. We can pass a 70 speech check to say, Calm down. I just want to talk. Okay, but this better not be a trick. What's going on in here? It's payback time, that's what. They've got no right to screw me over, and I'm tired of it. Alice, Andy is just using you to get the money. What are you talking about? Andy wants to help me leave this hole, doesn't he? No. Look at this note I found in his room. That, that, that son of a bitch. I'll take the money and I'll kill him too. And after that, she still wants to rob her own parents? So she wasn't doing this because she loved Andy, or that she thought that they would run away together. She genuinely wants this for herself. Well, Alice, do you have the money? She's guarding it, I know she is. She locked the bedroom door like that's gonna stop me. I was... I've got a gun, I'm gonna make her give it to me. Oh, okay. Well, go ahead. I'll wait for you. Yeah, okay. I'll shoot the lock off the door and then... And... Ah, oh, damn it! I can't do it, I can't. She deserves it and worse, but I can't hurt my own mother. We have two options. We can goad her by saying, I should have known you don't have what it takes. Oh, you think I won't do it? You think I'm not right in wanting back my life? I'll show you. What? What have I done? Mother. She shut the lock off the door and killed her mother. We can respond two ways. We can say, that was great. Good job, Alice. Are you out of your mind? I just... No, no, no! Or we can say, now there really is no turning back. Father, what's he going to do to me? I can't stay here. I can't hide from this. Grab the money and run far away. You really think I care about the money? I just... No, no, no! And no matter which of these options we choose, she runs out of the building. But we complete the quest, someone to watch over me. And if we go into Mrs. Hostetler's bedroom and loot her corpse, on her inventory we find a thousand caps. So this is what Don and his wife have been saving from his work at the Crimson Caravan over all of these years. I'm sure Alice saw this as quite a fortune. But as she fled the Hostetler home, she led us to believe that she didn't even care about the money. Maybe she just saw the money as the key to her freedom. It's not the money that meant anything to her. It was the idea of being free. If we choose to follow Alice, she takes us on a run with her gun drawn all the way to the Aerotech office park, which we know is being run by the NCR to serve as a refugee camp. She heads into the Aerotech Suite 300, lowers her weapon, and begins to walk around. Good to see you again. I'm just passing through here. Staying at this refugee camp under the wing of NCR thugs is the last thing on my mind. We sadly can't talk with her about anything that just happened. She stays here for the rest of the game, and we have no further interaction with her. Alternatively, instead of goading her, we can say, Give me your gun, Alice. Fine. Take it. But what the hell am I supposed to do now? At this point, we can attack and say, Hey, thanks for the gun. It'll make this easier. You too? 
Think I'm just a little girl? I'll show you. Whoa! Murderer! Oh no. Alice. Alice, baby. I'm sorry. So sorry. Over here! We lose karma, we fail the quest, and we have to kill both Alice and Mrs. Hostetler. But this is a viable solution for getting the thousand caps off her inventory. But instead of attacking her, we can point her into one of two directions, to either stay here with her family or to run away and start a new life for herself. We got to this point the long way. There is, however, a shorter way to get to this big decision, and that is at the very beginning to pass a rather difficult seven intelligence check to say, what do you really want, Alice? I, I don't know what I want, but I hate this place and I hate these people. It all used to be so simple. Why did they change? Why can't they see my pain? Either way, we arrive at the same point. We can convince her to leave by saying, you should get out of here and never come back. You're right. There's no place for me here. Just, just tell them I'm sorry and they won't have to worry about me. Ever again. Or we can say, your parents care for you, in their own way. Do they? Look at my mother. All she cares for is a patch of bare dirt where nothing green will ever grow to feed us. My father? A trading business that he'll never own, risking his neck every day against wastelanders and cutthroat merchants. And I'm supposed to be part of those dreams? What about my dream, stranger? What about me? And choosing this option allows us to pass a 75 speech check to encourage Alice to make her own decision by saying, only you can answer that. It's all me, isn't it? The pain, the anger, my joy. All of that's just me. I should have met you before, stranger. Thank you. And her own decision is to flee the household and to make a new life for herself. But this time we complete the quest, and we can open the door to the master bedroom to talk with Mrs. Hostetler. She... Alice left, didn't she? I can't believe you let her go. Some help you've been. Now that Alice is gone, we can always attack Mrs. Hostetler. I shouldn't have trusted you. You think you can take it? All right, bastard. I'll give you what you deserve. Or we can play the mercenary and say, You're alive, thanks to me. I expect my reward. I, I... I was blind to what was happening in my own family. We don't have much, but please take this. For a job well done, 200 caps. We've worked day and night for months to make that much. Sorry, stranger. It'll have to do. Or at this point we can say, You know what? Actually... Just keep it. We do need it, stranger. Still, I wish there was something we could give you in return. If you see Alice again, please, tell her we won't hold it against her. Tell Alice that we love her. Or instead of playing the mercenary, we can be empathetic with Mrs. Hostetler and say, sooner or later, she'd have left anyway. Yes, I suppose you're right. Please, accept half of our reserve. We'll manage, somehow, as we've always done. Choosing this option gives us an option to ask for 500 caps instead of 200. If you see Alice again, please, tell her we won't hold it against her. Tell Alice that we love her. Or like last time, we can say, you know what? I don't need it. Keep it for yourself. We again gain karma, and Mrs. Hostetler again tells us to tell her daughter that they love her. But we never find this option in the game. Even if we track Alice down to the Aerotech office park, we have no way to relay this message. The final option is instead of encouraging her to leave, or encouraging her to make her own decision, we can instead encourage her to stay by saying, Give your parents a chance. Maybe you're right, but what will they think? How can I look them in the face ever again? Well, I guess I don't deserve any better, huh? So be it. In which case, we gain karma, and Alice stays here. However, she doesn't have anything more to say to us. We can now open the door to the master bedroom and talk with Mrs. Hostetler. I was blind to what was happening in my own family. We don't have much, but please take this. And it dumps us right back into that reward dialogue tree, where we find all of the same options. With that, we complete the quest. And it's a complex quest that allows us to choose our own reward. Of course, the greatest reward would be to kill Alice and her mother, or allow Alice to do it for us. 
Only then do we get the thousand caps from Mrs. Hostetler. But of course, at the loss of karma. If we head back to the Crimson Caravan to talk with Don Hostetler, we now find an option to say, I've got to talk with you about your daughter, Alice. I really don't have time for this right now. But he just doesn't want to talk about her. Even after everything she's gone through, even though we can tell him that she just about killed her own mother, his wife, and may have even run away and left the family home, he's just not interested. And strangely enough, even though we have uncovered evidence that he's been having an affair with his secretary, we can't talk with him about it. We can't talk with Mrs. Hostetler about it. We can't talk with Alice about it. Don Hostetler never has to face the consequences for his actions. And going back to Crandon, he has no more jobs for us. Good to see you around. Take care, Merck. And with that, we tell the full story of North Vegas Square and the story of the Hostetler family in New Vegas. Even though murdering Mrs. Hostetler is the most profitable solution to this quest, which do you think is the most moral or ethical solution? Is it better to convince Alice to run away or to head out the door and make her own life with the possibility that she could be hurt, that she may be a bit too young to survive in the wasteland? Or is it better to convince her to stay at home, a home where she's miserable, watching her parents live lives that she would never want to live herself, a home where she thinks she has no future? Let me know your thoughts and how you chose to resolve this quest in the comments section below. We'll have to come back here in a future episode to explore those sewers. I wonder what we'll find. I publish new videos each and every week here on my channel, so if you want to make sure you don't miss my next episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I have a shirt shop with designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find my designs on other products as well, smartphone cases, mugs, pillows, posters, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more importantly, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with a brand new video.